Hi, I'm Exusis and uh, welcome to the epilogue of the German campaign. So, I just thought uh, I'd show off what happened in the peace conference because I'm guessing most people dropped out of it. So, uh, England got a major beating. It looks terrible. We did puppet most of continental Europe for ourselves. We puppeted Norway and Iceland and uh, the North Sea Empire or Denmark as Greenland. We puppeted North America except for Unitary Canada which uh, Italy managed to grab in the middle here of everything. We're still in the Axis so I guess that's fine. Mexico is an Italian puppet. Uh, Peru is still in the Asian prosperity sphere. We puppeted Egypt down here, so we got the Suez Canal. We grabbed quite a few of the islands around, not only here, but also in the Atlantic. We got Bermuda, of course, for ourselves. And the British holdings down here on St. Helens and Ascension Island, Falkland Islands. And over here in the Maldives and every Ceylon and everything around here as well. We also grabbed Australia and New Zealand as puppets for the German Reich. And uh, the US holdings around here, we grabbed them for ourselves. So they're, they're German owned. And we've got the uh, Greater East Asian Cocoa Space Sphere around here. So Japan grabbed all, all of the areas they conquered more or less. Uh, except Australia down here, which they hadn't actually conquered. And uh, yeah, so that's how the world map looks now. And I just thought I'd, uh, I'd also say, when we did the Operation Weizenhubo, we went into Denmark first, and then from Denmark staged an attack onto Norway. In real life, of course, we launched the attacks from Weizenhems uh, and from Hanover down here, but Wilhelmshaven probably. And up oh, along and the attack on Denmark actually came as the German troops were landing in Norway. And the British of course tried to land here and stop the Germans, which we didn't really see happening. They did try some landings afterwards. And uh, what more do I have to say? We kind of overdid the naval game a little bit, I think. We could have gone much less on dockyards. But this is kind of, well, not 60, but about 40 dockyards is the dockyards you need to build the German historical build up. And then you capture all of France's ones. And ones around here, and it adds up. So you get these 60 dockyards. And then you end up building loads of ships that you're never going to need. Or we could go for Japan, but I feel that's just kind of stretching, stretching it out. And if we look at... No, we probably can't look at that. We can check just Japan here and see their estimates. And we've got an estimated factors. Even if we take these 200 military factories, we've got 500 military factories. 300 civilian factories, they've got 150, so we've got more than double the amount of factories they do. And we've got a large land border to assault them on. So if we were to go to war with the Greater East Asian Cocos Prater Sphere, we've got the manpower, and because we were still on, uh, yeah, no, we're honestly on service by requirement. I thought we were on extensive conscription stuff. But we still got plenty more manpower to dig into if we needed to. So, we're just being primed, I think, to go off to Japan at this point. Well, it would be fun to fight the Navy, but I know the Naval AI in Hoi 4, and they haven't been building any decent ships since since the game start, more or less. They, they follow some weird kind of pattern. They upgrade, upgrade their carriers decently. The rest of the upgrades are kind of crap. And they don't usually get enough naval experience to actually upgrade them since they don't train their fleets. So our 1944 or 1940 ships, our uh, tier 3 battleships, would just sink everything they have once these are out. But obviously not going to go up when 
we don't have the dockyards. Uh, we had a lot more dockyards when we were occupying everything, of course, but not getting as much from our puppets. And um, then I wasn't planning on the attack on the Soviet Union to go as fast as it, as it did. I did think it was going to take a little bit longer for them to crumble. I did like the fight here with the Americans, though they put up a good resistance and managing the logistics there was fun. That was a very nice part of the campaign, I thought. The same thing with the invasion of England, I didn't really like how that played out. With the, I think it was basically France making the na naval invasions and we also kind of had to play along. I wanted to surround them out and attack from multiple points all around at the same time. And um, at this part of the campaign was pretty fun to play as well, I think. And we got to come conquer all the way down here, which at least stole from us in the peace treaty when we were trying to set up America. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see if we can check, check something else. Yeah, and then of course political power and everything kind of goes up. And um, now we're a little bit away from getting the modern tanks. Let's see if we can get into the tech tree here. I would have liked to play with the Tigers as well. But I had to make quite a few concessions to actually get the ship techs to build the historical layout, especially if this one cost a lot of time. I think that was 300 days in it, so uh, we can see that it's an 80 base research slot, so if you take it in 1940, it takes 80 days or 60 days or something, when the research bonus is applied. Um, we messed up a little bit on the tactical bomber here, we should have researched the tactical bomber before we got the uh, CAS uh, research bonus, since we needed to use that to get the jet fighters in ahead of time, or as, as far ahead of time as we did. It would be nice to get better strategic bombers too, but that's not a big one. I would have liked to test these ones as well. I think these uh, did play quite a big role in the in the ground combat and seeing where everything is and finding the enemy air bases to know where they were at and uh, they are going for. I usually don't go for the nuclear techs either. This one is okay if you get a research bonus for it, but I think nuclear bombs are pretty underwhelming in this game. As it should be, as it's on a strategical level. Oh, what more do we have down here? Now yeah, we skipped out on these ones. Since that's just swapping out something we had that was already working. Uh, support companies, yeah, we could have used more support companies, but as Jeremy and I feel that logistics company is a really good one to have always, of course. Uh, field hospitals are. Reading the uh, think this one instead. Uh, field hospitals are really nice to have when you don't have the manpower, since you get this trickle back, which saves manpower. And experience loss is, is a nice added bonus, but it's not worth just for that, especially not for Germany that lacks the rubber for motorized and putting it in every infantry division when you've got quite a lot of them. Birds. Maintenance companies I really like, they're really good. The reliability boost makes all the equipment. To it here so that you lose less equipment to reliability or to nutrition. And that's a really nice one. And we get to capture some enemy equipment as well. The military police would be nice too, but we have the, both the production capability to produce things and, and the manpower, so that's not really a big issue. Like playing with the Recon companies, I think reconnaissance makes a much bigger impact in the game now than it used to do since the last patch. And especially when you coupled it up with the armored car recon squads, they were made a really big difference. I would normally take that the research boost to be used for the armored cars. I'd normally use for mechanized. I'd have some mechanized in the tank divisions, just because they're cool. And we also played around a bit with the special forces. I like special forces. They just that they they have them. They have, they have the bonuses for what they do. And paratroopers is always nice to play with, but they're quite underwhelming actually. 
Oh uh, yeah, if you don't cheese with them, of course. Uh, what more do we have? Well, we played around a bit with the... Uh, yeah, we're all here now again. With the Operations and Cryptology Departments. I think Cryptology could probably be a little bit better. Uh, could increase the, all of these detections a little bit more. Just for having the, the passive bonus. And actually having a way to... Other than just getting these ones. And this one should probably be... So you can continue on these two. Uh, indefinitely. I right, didn't get us uh, anyone to use a suicide pill. That's good, I guess. Uh, no one felt the need to die for their country. And these... I uh, don't think this one's worth the time for it, actually. Just to get that extra... Uh, extra nationality on them. Let's see all of our... We've got one level 2 here. That's our first one. Our two level 2s. As we don't really get... Yeah, I think we had to replace after one got killed, didn't we? But yeah. It's, you can do quite a lot of nice things through here. But it does it does cost a lot of factories as well. That's also something to keep me keep in mind. And uh, what do we have to look through here? I was still building loads of infrastructure everywhere. And there is uh, something you could go for building some infrastructure in the states a little bit earlier. I usually try to build it in the states I know I'm, I will build refineries in so that we know that the refineries because they cost a lot of IC and they cost 14,500 a piece so you can build them up a little bit faster Yeah, we've obviously got more factors than we know what to do with here at the moment and uh, this is the a kind of standard tank or standard infantry division I like to go with. I like to have uh, 20 weight, of course, but having uh, 9 battalions, so 3 three regiments of uh, infantry, and then anti tank and anti air with them. And I put the support artillery here instead. And I would like to have it this way. The 23 is one of the worst combat bits we can have. I don't really know if that matters that much though. So, I'd like to play around with that and try some of these oddly numbered divisions in, in the campaign. Because I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Unless you're playing a competitive multiplayer, of course. And these were just basically what we were at the start of the game. And these, uh, yeah, they're the light armor. I quite like that they've added these different ones. I've got the armored one with the tanks of course. Are they nice? I don't think we changed very much here, we just added anti-tank and anti-air. And these are infantry divisions but on steroids. It's nothing more exciting there. I don't think we... yeah we used those with our light, light tanks. In the marine division we kind of changed up to try out these amphibious tanks. And I do think the amphibious tanks do their job very good at attacking. So, that's always that. And uh, I think this was just attempt to be kind of copied off from one of the... from Austria or something. To hold the ground. A lot of manpower, a lot of HP. Very, very cheap. Put the engineers on there for the extra entrenchments. That's uh, plus 9 entrenchment and plus 40 defense. That helps keep their losses down a little bit. Got our mountaineers. Uh, gain 20 weight and uh, all support companies. And uh, I like to have anti air on these just to get a little bit of piercing. So it's mostly for the piercing in case they run into tanks somewhere. Now we actually put, yeah, we put the light arm and recon cars on them because they added quite a lot of movement in the mountains and hills just to help them speed up a little bit extra there. MP. There's some armored cars there for some extra hardness. It didn't make that much of a difference. We probably should have added more of these. I'm thinking something like like that, and adding the MP company, which we never research. Just to bring the 
if you're using the MP research you want to fill out all five columns with something even if it's just cavalry on all, all five of them it's a little bit more efficient that way but if you don't have the MP uh, this design here would be the exact same as having just one or two cavalry and one armor car small MP yeah, that's the first one I think the original one which we're not using it anymore Panzer divisions just four medium tanks three more Christ Medium tank destroyer, that was a medium tank when we started out. And then we got some uh, light anti-air and light artillery, light self propelled artillery, just to convert all these old, old cheap tanks that we get. From, we usually get like 200 tanks or something from Czechoslovakia. So we might as well convert them into something useful. And this is the way I like to do that. We could have replaced these up with uh, medium tanks as uh, before Barbarossa probably and had, had something like that instead. It would be a better division all overall, but more expensive of course. Uh, paratroopers, nothing special at all there. A little bit fun that we can uh, drop in light tanks with, uh, with paratroopers as long as they're in the support company. Uh, yes, I don't think that armor helps very much. Maybe if you've got the 1942 or 1943 light tanks with increased armor, that would make a difference. Oh, yeah, and the, these are from the division, so it's not that we haven't designed those ourselves. And obviously we've got stockpile on almost everything. Anti-tank, we should have been producing more anti-tank all through the entire campaign, I think. But then again, we never really met any stiff tank to stiff tank armies, so we probably wouldn't have needed that much anti-tanks, since we've got anti-tanks in every single infantry division and we've got 390 of them yeah, except the garrison divisions here, of course, there's another what's that, 100 divisions or something? probably that's the final final numbers we, we had we had six paratrooper divisions I think we lost five of them but probably lost eight of them and built a few more and as for the navy I don't think we actually lost any capital ships yeah we lost one heavy ship yeah we lost the shine horse right yeah but otherwise we we didn't lose any any kind of it doesn't remember them all, it seems like, because we sunk thousands of thousands of convoys, and quite a quite a lot of carriers and battleships and cruisers. I think we dominated the seas quite quite handily, actually. Our submarines did a very good job on sinking almost everything. Um, I quite like these uh, the panzer ships as well. I think it's a it's a cool cool kind of design we've got going. And, and these are the ones we, we kind of just go through them. As the game pro progresses, I'm not gonna go through all of these because they change so much. I like the cruiser submarines as well, with the extra range and protection. So we can use them both as scouting vessels and with that range they can get quite a lot and of course the type uh, the number four there uh, tier four submarines are really good as well you usually don't fill out all slots in the submarines to keep production cost a little bit lower try to hit uh, torpedo attack values that the economy's got 60 hit points so we kind of want to aim for that and that is after this is before we have the admirals adding anything to them but we go in here to I think it was done, it says Yeah, he's the one commanding these ones. So if we go in on his submarines here we can see No, that's on the design stats. We can see that they've got 85 in torpedo attack. That's no problem for them at all to one hit the convoy. Even when the design only has 44 torpedo attack. They kinda have to keep in mind who's gonna be commanding them. And I think even and this is one of the starting type 2 submarines. There's 20, there's 3 torpedoes, so 3 attacks he needs to sink a convoy. They're not nearly as efficient. That should be one of the. Oh, it's a 
type 3 as well. I was wondering if we kind of had one of the all the type 2s. Or oh, tier, tier 2 submarines there. Oh, we lost quite a few submarines as well. So we've been replacing them. Yeah, but it looks like most of them have been sunk. Yeah, we did get the tier 3, tier 3 submarines already. There we go. Now let's, yeah. This is uh, type 9, right? Yeah. One of the earlier ones we had. Torpedo Tank 44 on this one as well. Yeah, it's a cruiser, cruiser one of course. And they're in the reserve fleet, so they don't have any any kind of bonuses. And our heavy ships here, uh, H class, pretty nice as well. But we'll we'll build a little bit more with the navy in, uh, in another cabin, I think. We play Japan or something. Japan has uh, quite a heavy investment into the navy, so we should be able to beat the US. Uh, as a player, that's usually not the case, but still. So, um, if you have any questions or anything, just put them down below in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. If you want to get notified when the next series starts, make sure to subscribe. And until next time, take care.